أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وخاتم النبيين سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا حبيب إله العالمين أب القاسم مصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل لا أسألكم عليه أجرا إلا المودة في القربى صدق الله العلي العظيم صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Before we start our discussion we should give our most heartfelt thanks, congratulations and expressions of pride and gratitude to our sisters Sayyida Fatima Talibi and Sayyida Safa Talibi for helping our students to practice and train and deliver such a beautiful presentation. For their continued success in this life and the next, I ask the brothers and sisters to please recite three loud salawats. <laughs> loud salawats, inshaAllah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad And of course it could not have been accomplished so successfully without the help of our brother Shaykh Agha Salman Bayat So let us recite a loud salawat for him as well insha'Allah Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. These are just a few of the fruits of the efforts of the teachers here at the Sunday classes at Imam Ali Masjid, which we encourage all the brothers and sisters to bring their children, bring their youth, and to bring themselves. We have classes at many levels. We have classes for the beginner, the intermediate, and advanced classes for the older students and the adults. So we ask everyone please to attend these classes so they can take benefit and not lose out on the gold that is freely being given at these classes, insha'Allah. Salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Today, tonight, we are gathered here to commemorate the birth anniversary of the greatest woman to ever walk the face of this earth and the greatest who will have ever walked on the face of this earth. Sayyida Fatima al-Zahra, Sayyidat Nisa al-Alameen, Salamullahi alayha. The daughter of our holy messenger, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Whenever we speak about one of the personalities of the Ahlul Bayt, whether it's the Prophet himself, or Imam Ali alayhi salam, or Lady Fatima, Salamullahi alayha, or one of the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, we always fall short. We should never think that whenever we give a speech, a lecture, or we talk about their qualities and virtues, that we have met the mark in doing justice to their actual virtue and qualities. It is impossible for us, with our limited knowledge and limited spiritual experiences, our limited righteousness, to understand the depth and quality of the virtues that they possess. This is impossible. A student who is studying basic arithmetic, just learning that one plus one equals two, is not able to comprehend the knowledge and expertise of an expert mathematician. That student can only appreciate that teacher as far as his own experience will allow him, as far as his own knowledge and expertise will allow. So us, the followers of the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt, we are only able to understand their personality and qualities to the extent of our own knowledge, piety, and righteousness. The more we want to understand them, 
This can only be possible by increasing our righteousness, our knowledge, and our piety. So for us to say that we love them, and we want to increase that love, the only way that that love can be increased is by following in their footsteps, by obeying their commands, and by learning more about them. The closer we get to their personalities, the more we will be able to understand who they truly were, and the more we will be able to express our love and admiration for them. So we are talking tonight about the light of the heavens and the earth of this world and the next. The daughter of the Holy Messenger of Allah, Sayyida Fatima Zahra, Salamullah Alayha. Lady Fatima, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon her. In the fifth year of the Prophet's mission, while he was in Mecca, the Muslims were under heavy persecution. They were under great oppression. It was at this time that Allah blessed his messenger with the miracle of the night of Mi'raj, the night on which the Holy Prophet of Islam was taken by Allah from Masjid al-Haram, from Mecca to the heavens where the Prophet saw angels, where he saw previous prophets and spoke and conversed with them, where he was shown the heaven and the hell, and where he got to a point where he was speaking directly with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was on this night that the archangel Jibreel alayhi salam gave the prophet a gift. From the tree of Tuba, which is a tree in paradise, the angel Jibreel gave a fruit to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And upon eating this fruit, the seed which was to become Lady Fatima, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon her, entered into his being and in his body. And when he came back down to the earth, that is how Fatima entered this world. That is why Fatima al-Zahra, Lady Fatima, is called Hawratul Insiya. She is the heavenly maiden, the heavenly being among the human beings. She was a fruit of heaven that was brought down to this earth through the luminous essence of the Holy Prophet of Islam. It is said by the Prophet's wife Aisha, that the Prophet loved his daughter very much and as any father who loves his daughter very much he used to kiss Fatima a lot. So she asked the Prophet, she was amazed how a father could love his daughter so much she said why is it that you show so much love and affection to Fatima and the Prophet said to her that whenever I kiss Fatima I smell the scent of the highest heaven from her. Whenever he wanted to remember the smell of heaven which he experienced on the night of Mi'raj, he would go to Fatima. Fatima to Zahra, she had nine names that she was famous for. The first one is her proper name, which is Fatima. The second is Siddiqa, meaning the truthful one, the most truthful. The next one is Tahira, the pure and the clean. The next is Mubaraka, the blessed. The next is Zakiya the purified. The next is Radiya, she is pleased. The next one is Maradiya, she is well pleasing. Radiya, that she is pleased with Allah and the Messenger and with everything that she is given. And Maradiya, that she is pleasing to Allah and His Messenger. The next is Muhadditha, meaning that she would speak with the angels. She was called Muhaddatha and Muhaddatha because the angels spoke with her and she was able to speak with the angels. And lastly, she was called Zahra, meaning the luminous one, full of light. The Prophet of Islam sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam asked Imam Ali alayhi salam, do you know why my daughter is called Fatima? Imam Ali alayhi salam said, please tell me why. The Prophet said, because she is called Fatima because she and the followers, the Shia of her school, are separated from the fire of hell. So whoever follows Fatima truly, sincerely, will be kept far away from the fires of hell. Imam Sadiq was asked, 
why is it that Fatima is called Az Zahra? And he said, because Zahra means luminous and shining. And Fatima was such that when she stood in the mihrab for prayer, she was a light and a radiance for the people, the inhabitants of the heavens, in the same way that the light of the stars is a light for the people of the earth. After the Prophet ﷺ lost his wife Khadija, he lost his uncle Abu Talib, the person who was left to comfort him against the attacks of the polytheists in Mecca was his young and tender daughter of a tender age, Fatima al-Zahra sallamullahi alayha. Just to give an example of the hardships she had to endure with her father, one day the Prophet of Allah was worshipping next to the Kaaba. His enemies were there and they decided that they would gather the entrails of an animal. They brought it and while he was in sajda, they poured this between his shoulders on his back. And when they performed this, they started laughing and jeering and pretending that this was a very humorous thing to insult and try to humiliate and embarrass the Messenger of Allah. Salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. When Fatima the Zahra heard what had happened, she rushed to her father and with tears in her eyes, she cleaned the dirt and the entrails off of him and comforted him and consoled him. She was the rock on which he relied. Whenever he was being oppressed, outside, he would go back to his home and be comforted by Fatima. This is why because of all of the affection and support which he received from her, as our students said when speaking about Fatima, that she was called Umm Abiha, that she was called the mother of her father. Because of the love and affection which she showed to him is the same as the love and affection which a mother shows for her children. It is said that whenever the Prophet ﷺ would leave to go on a journey, the last person that he would visit before he left on the journey was Fatima. And when he returned from his journeys, the first person that he would visit was Fatima. Then he would go to the masjid to perform two rakats of prayer, and then he would go to visit everyone else, showing her importance to the Holy Prophet. Her position is mentioned many times in the Qur'an. And we will go through just a few of these verses. As our dear students mentioned, several of them mentioned the event of the Mubahala. Mubahila. This occurred when a delegation of Christians from the region called Najran came to the Prophet and after having discussions and arguments with him about the issue of Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, and about his own messengership, they did not accept his call. Even though he gave them the best logic and the best reasoning, they did not accept. So Allah sent the verse of Surah Ali Imran, chapter 3, and in verse 61, Allah said, فَمَنْ حَاجَّكَ فِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ So whoever disputes with you in this matter, after the true knowledge has come to them, after the correct arguments, the proofs have come to make everything so clear to them that there is no room left for doubt whatsoever. What does Allah say to them? فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُوا أَبْنَاءَنَا أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ ثُمَّ نَبْتَهِلْ فَنَجْعَلْ لَعْنَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَاذِبِينَ That the Prophet was told to say to these Christ, the Christian delegation, that you call your sons, we will call our sons. You call your women, we will call our women. And you will call yourselves, and we will call ourselves. And we will gather together, and we will pray that Allah sends the curse on whichever group is lying. There are many subtle points which are made clear by this verse. One, that the ones who the Prophet brings are the ones who are worthy of being called the Prophet's sons, women, and selves. These are the three groups which are listed here. 
and only those worthy and virtuous enough to come with him will have the pleasure of being given these titles. So it is unanimously agreed upon by all schools of Islam that when this challenge was met, the Prophet brought with him Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein alayhim salam he brought with him Sayyidah Fatima salamullahi alayha and he brought with him Imam Ali alayhi salam which shows that Hassan and Hussein were called his sons Fatima was the only one worthy enough to be called his women and Imam Ali alayhi salam was considered as the nafs the self of the Prophet this is one the next point which is emphasized by this verse is that when this call is made to come to this challenge, the only ones who should be included in the challenge are the ones who are making a claim. We see it is the Prophet of Islam who is making a claim that he is the Prophet of Allah, that there is only one God, and that he should be believed in as the final messenger, and the religion of Islam should be accepted. So why bring Ali, Fatima, Hassan, and Hussein to the challenge? Because the curse of Allah will come onto whoever is the group that is lying. The reason is that because Ali, Fatima, Hassan, and Hussein are included in the mission of the Prophet. They are a part of the mission of Islam. It is not just the Prophet by himself. Just as much as the Prophet was a part of the mission, it could not have been completed without the support of of Ali, Fatima, Hassan, and Hussein. If they were not a part of the mission, if they were not a part of the claim of Islam, then the Prophet would not have brought them, and Allah would not have ordered him to bring them. Only those people who are a part of the claim of Islam were to be brought to this challenge. So we see that Fatima al Zahra, at this young age, she is of such a high status that she is among those who are calling people towards Islam by the command of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter 33, verse 33. Very easy verse to remember. 33, 33, four threes. We can't get it wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Innama yuridu Allahu li yudhiba ankum al rijsa ahl al bayti wa yutahirakum tatahira. Allah says, Verily, verily. Allah only intends to keep away all uncleanness from you, O Ahlul Bayt, O family, O household of the Prophet, and to purify you with a perfect purification. It is narrated by the Prophet's wife Aisha in Sahih of Muslim. She says, One day the Prophet وسلم, came out in the afternoon wearing a black cloak. Then Al-Hasan ibn Ali came, and the Prophet took him under the cloak. Then Hussein came, and the Prophet took him under the cloak. Then Fatima came, and the Prophet entered her under the cloak. Then Ali came, and the Prophet took him under the cloak as well. And then the Prophet recited this verse, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهِّرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا Meaning that this verse is specifically about these people which the Prophet has taken under his cloak and the verse does not include anyone else except for those that the Prophet and the Imams of Ahlul Bayt themselves have mentioned that included in the Ahlul Bayt are also the nine descendants of Imam Hussein alayhi salam who are also part of the Ahlul Bayt. So Fatima al-Zahra is included in this verse which speaks of the purity and immaculateness of the Ahlul Bayt, of the people of the house of the Prophet. Allah is saying by this verse that the Prophet and his household, those included under the cloak of the Prophet, they are infallible. They are sinless. They are free from all defects of sin, whether sin of action or sin of thought or sin of intention. Any mistake whatsoever that is possible is kept far, far away from them. This is the status of Fatima al-Zahra. Ayesha narrates that the Prophet وسلم, when he was ill in the last days of his life, he said to Fatima, he says, Ya Fatima, are you not pleased with the fact 
that you are the leader of the women of all the worlds, the leader of the women of this ummah, and the leader of the women of all the believers. It is narrated by Abu Huraira that the Holy Prophet of Islam وسلم, has said that an angel in the sky asked permission from Allah to come see the Prophet and he was given permission and the Prophet said that this angel told me the good news that Fatima is the leader of all the women of my nation. Hudayfa, one of the companions of the Prophet, he narrates that the Holy Prophet of Islam sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has said that there was an angel who asked permission to come and see me just as the other angel. An angel asked permission to come see me was granted permission and he gave me the good news that Fatima sallallahu alayha is the leader of all the women of paradise and Hassan and Hussein are the leaders of all the youths of paradise. It is narrated by the second Khalif, Umar ibn al-Khattab, where he says that I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam say that the family tree of the children of every woman is attributed to their father. The lineage of the children is attached to the father except for Fatima's children because I am their father and I am their family. So Hassan and Hussein and the Imams of Ahlul Bayt who were the children of Fatima, they are the sons of the Prophet of Islam sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And also the, the second Khalif, Umar ibn al-Khattab, he also narrates, he says that I heard the Messenger of Allah say sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, that except for my family and my relations of kin, every family and relationship will be broken on the Day of Judgment. That on the Day of Judgment, every single person who was brought before Allah will stand as an individual free from all ties and associations. And it is said in the Qur'an that people on that day will say, Allah, take other people instead of me, where they will even ransom their own family members to be saved from the punishment of the fire. Everyone will have their ties and connections and family affiliations severed on that day except the Holy Prophet of Islam and his Ahlul Bayt. There are many verses of the Qur'an which have been specifically revealed about the Prophet's family and especially Fatima al-Zahra sallallahu alayha. One of those is a series of verses in the 76th chapter of the Holy Qur'an, Surah Al-Insan, also called Surah Al-Dahr or Surah Al-Ata. And according to the narrations and the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, verses 5 through 11 or 12 were revealed about Imam Ali alayhi salam and Lady Fatima sallallahu alayha. And according to the school of Ahlul Bayt, the entire surah was revealed about them. Nonetheless, this specific story and this specific set of verses was revealed on a very special occasion, specific occasion. The verses in question are, Allah says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Inna al Abrara Yashrabuna min Kaisin Kan Mizajuha Kafura, Aina Yashrabu Biha Ibadullahi Yufajiruna Ha Tafjira, Yufuna bin Nadri wa Yahofuna Yawman Kan Sharruhu Mustatira, Wa Yutaimuna Taama ala Hubbihi Miskina wa Yatima wa Asira, Innama Nutamukum Lewajhilah. لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا إنا نخاف من ربنا يوما عبوسا قمطريرا. The occasion of the revelation of these verses was such that, as narrated by Abdullah ibn Abbas, one of the companions of the Prophet, who was held in great esteem by all schools of Islam, he narrates that Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein alayhi salam in their childhood. They had fallen very sick. And the Prophet came to see how they were doing. And the Prophet said to Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says, Ya Abu al Hassan, it will be good if you take another, if you take an oath to Allah for your children so that they can be cured from the sickness. Meaning that when you take another, you say to Allah, Allah, if you accept my prayer, then I will perform such and such a thing, whether an act of worship or an act of charity or some good act. 
So Imam Ali alayhi salam and Lady Fatima, peace be upon them both, they said that they will fast for three days. So when Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein alayhi salam were cured of their sickness, they started the three days of fast. Imam Ali alayhi salam had a small amount of barley in his house. And he took this and gave it to Fatima. And she ground it into flour and she baked bread with it so that they could break their fast with this bread. When the time for iftar came and they were about to break their fast, there was a knock on the door. When they opened the door, there was a poor man, a beggar. And he said, you are the family of the Prophet. Can I please have some food from you? Can you give me some food? And in return for it, Allah, may He grant you food from paradise. So being the family of the Prophet with the virtues that they have, they gave everything that they had to this beggar and they broke their own fast with nothing else but water. Day one. The second day, Imam Ali alayhi salam took the barley that he had earned that day, gave it to Fatima, she ground it into flour and baked bread that they could break their iftar with it. And when they were about to break their fast at the iftar time, another knock came on the door. They opened the door and it's an orphan, a yatim, who was asking for food. So they took the food that they had, gave it to this orphan, and they broke their fast with nothing but water. And on the third day, the same routine. When they were about to break their fast with the hard-earned bread that they had prepared for themselves on that day, the knock came on the door, and it was a captive of war, an asir. So this was given to him, all the food that they had. And once again on the third day, they broke their fast with nothing but the water that they had. So they went to see the Holy Prophet of Islam sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Imam Ali took Hassan and Hussein to the Prophet after they had been cured of their illness and after they had completed their vow to Allah to fast for three days. And the Prophet noticed that Imam Ali alayhi salam showed the signs of hunger on his face and on his body. And he went with Ali, Hassan and Hussein to the house of Fatima. And there he saw Fatima in a state of worship and the signs of hunger were also upon him and this grieved him greatly. And he said to them, this is very hard for me to see you in this situation. It was at this moment that Allah sent the angel Jibreel and he came and he said, Oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, take this chapter of the Qur'an with it, Allah sends His salutations upon you and your family. And then the Prophet recited the verses of Surah Al-Insan to them. What did the verses say? The verses said, Surely the righteous, meaning Ali, Fatima, Hassan and Hussein, Surely the righteous shall drink from a cup, the mixture of which is camphor, a very delicious and tasty drink in paradise, a fountain from which the servants of Allah shall drink. They make it to flow a good flowing forth. They fulfill their vows and their fear a day, the evil of which shall be spreading far and wide. And they give food out of love for Allah to the poor, the orphan and the captive. And what do they say? They say, we only feed you for the sake and pleasure of Allah. We do not desire from you any reward or any thanks. Surely we fear from our Lord a stern and distressful day. Therefore, Allah will guard them from the evil of that day and cause them to meet with ease and happiness and reward them because they were patient with gardens and silk. They will recline therein on raised couches. They shall find therein neither the severe heat of the sun nor the great intents of the cold. So this verse is revealed specifically for the sacrifice that Fatima sallallahu alayha and Imam Ali alayhi salam, they performed for the curing of Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And this hadith, this narration is accepted by all schools of Islam and even among the scholars of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, this hadith is mutawatir, meaning it has been narrated so many times by so many different chains that it is irrefutable. It is unquestionably authentic. Abdullah ibn Abbas, he further narrates, he says that when the people of Paris, he narrates of course from the Prophet, he says, when the people of paradise will be in heaven, they'll be in paradise, they will see a light 
like the light of the sun through which the paradise will be illuminated. And the people of paradise, they will say, O Ridwan, the keeper of the heaven, his name is Ridwan, the guardian angel of paradise. They will ask him, what is this illumination, this light that we're seeing? Hasn't Allah, our Lord, clearly stated in the Quran, in the same chapter, 76 verse 13, they shall find therein neither the light of the sun nor the intense cold. But now they see a light which is like the sun. And Ridwan, the angel, replied, replied to them, this is neither the illumination of the sun or the moon. Rather, it is Ali and Fatima who are, who are laughing. And thus, all of paradise is being illuminated through the light of their mouth and their teeth. The light of their laughter and their happiness is what is going to illuminate paradise. When the Prophet of Islam, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, was still in Mecca before the hijrah, there was one of the chiefs of the pagans by the name of As ibn Wa'il. And he one day spoke with the Prophet around near the Kaaba. And once he finished speaking with the Prophet, he went back to the gathering of the other chiefs of the pagans of Mecca. And they asked him, they said, who were you speaking with? And he said, I was speaking with Abtar. Abtar is a word which they used. Abtar is a word which they used as an insult to the Prophet. It means somebody who does not have any offspring, who does not have any posterity, who does not have someone to carry his name forward. Because in Mecca the Prophet had two sons, both of whom died in infancy. So the enemies of the Prophet were very happy. They thought that when the Prophet left this world, that Islam and his religion would also leave this world with him. In order to answer them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he revealed Surah Al Kawthar. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna Atayna Kal Kawthar. Fasalli li Rabbika Wanhar. Inna Shani Aka Huwal Abtar. Allah says, Verily, verily, we have given to you as a gift Al Kawthar, which has many meanings. One of which is our discussion for tonight. One of which is that Al Kawthar is Fatima al Zahra. Allah is answering the enemies of the Prophet who are claiming that he has no offspring and no progeny, that through Fatima al Zahra, his descendants will fill the world, and Islam will be spread and propagated till the day of judgment through his descendants and his followers. And now it is the time for the prayer, Alhamdulillah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that by the love that he has for Fatima al Zahra, salamullah alayha, by the right that she has with him, that insha'Allah, Allah accepts all of our prayers, that He forgives us and those of our mu'mineen and mu'minat, brothers and sisters who have left this world, and that He gives quick and speedy recovery to all of the sick and ill believers and Muslims around the world, that He guides those who are willing to be guided, want to be guided, and all those who are looking for guidance, and all of those who are in this day and age attacking the holy and pure religion of Islam, we ask you, O Allah, by the right and love of Fatima, that you open their eyes and show them the error of their ways and guide all to the light of Islam and the love of Fatima al-Zahra, sallam allahi alayha. Rihamallahu man qara al-Fatiha ma'al-ikhlasi wa salawat.